Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for giving me a chance to do this presentation on modeling the rheological response and extrusion printing. Victor and Gianluca did a very good job of setting the stage up, so I probably can go a little fast and not go through a lot of um, lot of details. Um, this work was done by two of my recent PhD graduates, uh, Dr. Suraj Nair and Dr. Poya. So um, layered extrusion is what we are talking about. Um, and in rheology of the fresh systems, what we need is concrete to be soft enough to be extruded and to intermix with the previous layer and to support its own weight in the barrel superimposed layer. So we have the issues with time that some of those things that were discussed here, changing of, of rheological properties from la layer to layer, rate of buildup, operation time. But what we also have are the different processes and different geometries that you may have to deal with with respect to the, the extruder or the nozzle um, and the velocities and the different changes that happen in the printing process. So rheology measurements are very critical in understanding uh, many of these important parameters. So in, in this talk, I'm going to do a very simplified talk where we're going to look at extrusion through idealized geometries uh, deliberately to, to introduce worst case scenarios with respect to printing. I'm using a RAM extrusion process. We have started doing some screw extrusion simulations as well, but the idea is to relate materials and process factors with geometry. So RAM extrusion is a reasonably easier way of doing it and see how our models stack up with experimental results and see how robust the models are. I'm going to be dealing with the cement paste. The past two presentations did concrete, so I'm going to deal with cement paste as a model idealized system. Again, from a particle standpoint, so you basically exaggerate it and you get a hardcore soft shell concrete model like Gianluca presented. But this is, is much more computationally efficient and gives us uh, the basic parameters that we are looking for. And then uh, Victor talked about slip um, in concrete. I'm just going to use some analytical models, couple them with the discrete element simulations that we have to get an idea of how slip happens in pace in an extrusion flow so that um, we can look at materials, process, and those combined effects. So, so um, we're looking at a, just a simple extrusion case um, on a RAM with, with a RAM. And if you look at extrusion pressure, pressure versus displacement, which we are going to use quite a lot for both simulations and our analytical models, the idea is that you have a pre-consolidation state for a smaller RAM displacement. Then you have a plastic deformation flow with almost no change in extrusion pressure. pressure. And then, of course, depending on the type of mix and type of extrusion, extruder conditions, you might have a very rapidly increasing pressure region because of dead zones and stuff like that. So the idea is to use such a, a curve and then with different velocities of flow, which we can actually simulate using a discrete element method, you can actually start getting different, uh, different features of, of the material and transformations that the material undergoes. So um, extrudability depends on the mixture and the extrusion process you can have. You now, so I'm showing here three different mixes, uh, particle packing changed, water cement ratio changed, um, to look at the extrusion pressure versus displacement. Um, you can have extrudate that are, um, you know, in this condition where the print is dis, um, discontinuous, very continuous extrusion where you can actually start printing it quite well. Again, remember, these are all paste. And then much more fluid systems, extrusion pressure is low, but then you don't, you get lots of plastic deformation and you don't get geometry consistency. So you need to have a sweet spot with the pressure displacement relationship, the steady state pressure, which what we call out. Um, but that also is a function of materials and the packing. So you really cannot uh, separate these two things. You can take one material and do the entire process for that one material. But when you have to change the material properties, um, there's lots of changes that will happen. So we're looking at a very simplified geometric ratio here. And, and to, to make things simple for our simulations, we just either used an orifice or a uniform die. Some other picture is missing. Um, the die where the, the uh, die entry and die exit have the same diameter, either a large or a small diameter, or a tapered die with a larger 
entry diameter and smaller exit diameter. Now, if you take this part off of the tapered die and make the angle all the way here straight, which you can simply change this equation L and D or L over D, which is surface area to volume, you actually get the extruder geometry that you normally use um, in, in, in many of the extruders. So we can do the geometric ratio and come up with with uh, values of geometric ratio. So this is basically um, a strain. You can see that that's just a strain because change in diameter from the larger one to the smaller one. So how the strain of the material that's going through. And this is what happens if you have um, a, a die. So this is the process of what's happening through the die. Again, even if you are extruding with a screw extruder, if it is passing through a die, you will have similar, um, similar effects. So if you look at different mixes, and do the pressure displacement relationship, you can see that with if you, if you have just an orifice, you have a relatively lower pressure. Um, and then if you have a sharper nozzle or a, or a thinner nozzle, the pressure is obviously high. But the important thing to notice between all these different mixtures, which I'll talk a little more about as we go through, um, is again, this idea of designing the right paste for your system. Um, as you go further, uh, down by replacing cement with materials like fly ash and limestone and silica fume or super plasticizer, you can see that the, the portion where the pressure starts to go up much higher is stretched all the way to the end of your extruder rather than in this case for OPC or for fly ash mixes where you, you have it happening quite early. And that is an indication of the mixture changing its composition because of water filtration and effects like that. Um, as you and you really don't want such effects to get a, a, a homogeneous mixture. So again, there is a big advantage in using mixtures that does not give you these effects when you are designing the paste fact fraction for 3D printing, uh, because we have consistently found out even in a screw extruder, even with a large scale printer, even when it is a mortar, these binders perform much better than binders that have um, a reduced particle size range. Um, and, and so multiple materials actually does a good job. And you can see that there are certain mixtures where all of those, all of those geometries, it's really geometry invariant. So you can even go to the extreme of making a reasonable geometry invariance with actual particle packing within the materials. So here, here you can see here, I'm, I'm showing you the point of exponential pressure rise. And you can see these are all very high values closer to uh, almost the end of the ramp. So you can reduce the dead zone length um, by choosing the appropriate pace proportions. I'll show you simulations as to why this becomes important. Now, ramp velocity can be related to the print velocity and equate the flow rates in the barrel and the printed element. And if you do multiple velocities, these are all print velocities, from 5 millimeter per second to 50 millimeter per second print velocity, you can still ag again see the dependence of, um, of uh, extrusion pressure on the displacement here um, for mixes with or without superplasticizer with different, um, different ingredients. So these are simplistic tests that you can use as quality control. And also what we have used here is to, is to use those tests, uh, uh, these tests as validations for our simulations. Okay, so discrete element is what we have used, and, and I don't want to spend time on, um, on, the, on the process and, and explanations because the past two speakers did a good job of that. So um, again, like I said, we are doing PACE, um, local constitutive loss to do um, interactions. Um, we have cohesive friction moment contact law. We've used a Burgers model with normal and shear, um, shear elements. Um, AID is an open source platform, Linux platform that we've used for a lot of our initial simulations. AID is actually very powerful and, and allows you to do a lot of, um, lot of modifications and write, write one's own codes to, to do this. But then there are commercial packages like PFC and EDEM, et cetera. Um, we've used PFC, uh, both 2D and 3D, but we're showing, going to show you a little bit of 2D, PFC 2D modeling also with, uh, with AID. So uh, the idea is to get the right model dimension, model source. This is where we had quite a bit of trouble because we're simulating paste, we're simulating really small particles. Um, and therefore there are so many particles, the computation time gets really huge. So we have to do a lot of compromises in the particle size distribution. But again, like Jan Luca showed, you have to do a lot of simulations to generate parameters that can be used to fit many of these equations. So we played around with the parameter fitting a little bit 
to, to allow for, um, for simulations matching the experiments. Right, so um, particle scale contact behavior through the Burgers model, uh, Kelvin and Maxwell model in both normal and shear directions. And we calibrated it using a mini slump, mini slump for paste uh, mixes. We wanted something that is printable, so the mini slump is not very high. We did not want a, a very flowable mix, so that was, that was the, the difference. And with nozzle geometries, we could use that model into those simulations then. I'm, I'm not going to go through through all of that. This is just, just the mathematics that goes behind um, all these models. But for the simulation, so here is a slum test and the simulation of a slum test from a very, very crude particle model. You can see that the number of particles are very low. Um, you can actually increase the number of particles and, and increase the computation time. We found out that there is a plateau um, beyond which we are not getting, we were still getting some improvement, but it's not really worth it. So if you look at it, you'll see how we have changed the particle size distribution. The blue line is the actual cement and the red one is a particle size. It's, it's almost like a, like a single size distribution at this point. Um, and then um, we used for different simulations, like I said, we used you know finer and finer all the way. This is the actual one, but we got all the way here. And then we we got reasonably consistent uh, consistent results with uh, with the number of particles. So here is the a, a few of the parameters that we are looking at. Again, um, the idea is to relate what is happening to the mix mix while it is undergoing an extrusion process through an extruder, which is a worst case scenario, so that our mix that you've designed or your pace that you've designed, you can be rather sure it holds up to those kinds of, of processes that happens in an extruder or in a, in a nozzle. So um, you see here the contact force um, um, network for all those different um, combinations. You have a tapered nozzle, a larger nozzle, a smaller nozzle, no nozzle at all with much lower pressure. You can see how the contact force network changes. Now, the reason why we use this contact force network is from these forces, you can understand, for example, and I'll show you in a minute, what is happening with the dead zones and what is forming and what angles the dead zones are forming, etc. So here is a quick simulation, again, um, a, a simple simulation of, of, um, of flow through nozzle. Again, um, we have adjusted the contact forces and, and the inner particle um, constitutive models in such a way that um, we get the, the layer heights correct and, and it, it, it is consistent as we, as we go through the printing process. So again, very simplified um, uh, 2D model. This is in, in PFC. Um, 2D model. So um, if you look at simulations, and these are the one third scale, and you're you're seeing forces here. So again, you you get a third of that. So it fairly matches well. We need to still tweak it, especially when it comes to the orifice case where there is no die wall. Some of those die wall effects are we see are much more dominant now. So again, this is not a very common scenario. So even if this doesn't really agree with it, we, we are fine. Uh, we are worried about, about these cases. So um, the other thing that we looked at was the die entry pressure. Um, when you push the material through and, and it enters the die, what are, is the pressure that, that it takes? Again, it is a big function of liquid phase filtration that happens, the particle size distribution that you have in there. And you can start to see the development of, of particles with a higher pressure or a higher force network as you get closer to the, the die entry. And this is the evolution of force, um, again, for a very smooth paste as it comes through uh, the, the nozzle and the extruder. But if you, if you look at a velocity evolution, and, and I'm using velocity evolution actually here to to relate it to slip flow, which um, which I just mentioned a little bit a little while ago, uh, like in, in Victor's presentation, there is a layer of low depleted solids and and a low viscosity uh, closer to the edges, which we see in regular concrete printing as well. And so the velocity extrusion, um, velocity development in extrusion was used um, to to use an analytical model that explains slip. Um, so here are the dead zones that you can see. You can see the, the um, uh, formation of dead zones of, of particles which, are, which have almost zero velocity, just staying 
um, forming um, a shear shear zone here. And that's again a function of nozzle. Now, if you make the nozzle tapered right from here, you will not have that much of dead zone. But like I said, the idea is to qualify mixtures and make sure that we get the right mixtures with the low, with the lowest amount of dead zone uh, possible. So um, what we have done is using those simulations, we can use steady state pressure, which you can obtain from simulations, which I showed in the experiments earlier also. And you can relate that to print velocities and steady state pressure print velocity relationships you can gain. We can do dead zone length with print velocities. Again, these are all coming from simulations. And then you can use that to do dead zone length and steady state pressure to actually find out different zones and velocities that you can also use to find out at different velocities what are the ranges that you can you can expect and you can use this as a qualification criteria before you uh, before you design your mixes and finally finally slip and paste extrusion things that Victor talked about because particles crowd and lock in place um, and that disturbs the lubrication layer that makes it flow which is a big function of volume fraction of particles field just looking at paste. So basically what we have looked at is from a steady state extrusion stage, we are extracting uh, the shear rates of flow as a function of depth or thickness of the pipe in which it's flowing. We can find out a slip velocity with a slip coefficient where you have a lot of lump parameters. Um, you can find an apparent shear rate, the true shear rate, the apparent is a Newtonian, true is the actual shear rate for a fluid that's non-Newtonian. You can, you can develop that. And basically, the velocity distribution that we have, again, many of these velocities come from the discrete element simulated velocities that we have. So that's what you're seeing here, the velocity distribution across the pipe. Um, and you can see here with uh, the, the slip velocity, 